Since Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th U.S. president in January, the direction of China-U.S. relations has been closely watched. A key focus was whether Biden would continue the hostile stance towards China taken by his predecessor Donald Trump. In February, Presidents Xi Jinping and Biden talked over the phone. In their first phone call, they agreed to maintain close communication on the basis of mutual interest. It was a good start. Then came the first high-level face-to-face meeting in Alaska in March. In attendance were China's senior diplomat Yang Yichu and Foreign Minister Wang Yi, Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan led the U.S. delegation. This video went viral on Chinese social media. A heated exchange at the opening of the meeting with each other rebuking the other's policies. The agenda covered human rights, Taiwan, Hong Kong and climate change. A no joint statement was issued. In April, U.S. senators introduced the Strategic Competition Act of 2021 aiming to counter China's increasing global influence. The U.S. is off balance currently, and it wants to externalize this insecurity to others, especially China, because it fears China is gaining strength as America declines. In June, Yang Jiechi and Antony Blinken spoke again, but on the phone this time, Blinken brought up issues of Hong Kong, Xinjiang, Taiwan, as well as investigations into the origins of COVID-19. Again, some old tricks. Yang urged the U.S. to stop interfering in China's internal affairs. Later, tensions continued to build up. More Chinese companies were added to the U.S. blacklist, and the U.S. Senate passed a bill to ban all products from Xinjiang over alleged forced labor. Then, in July, U.S. Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman met with Wang Yi in the eastern Chinese city of Tianjin. Wang accused the U.S. of trying to suppress China's development while Sherman said the U.S. was willing to have open and candid contact with China. In September, she seven months gap in direct communication between them. Relations seem to have looked up a bit since then. Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou was allowed to return to China in September after nearly three years of detention in Canada. In October, Yang Jiechi and Sullivan met again in Zurich. With little drama this time, they agreed to maintain high-level talks and improve communication. All these have most likely remained, but at least the two sides are willing to talk.